spot in the United States was the desolate region west of the Pecos River. Virtually beyond the reach of the authorities, the railroads, then pushing their way west, attracted the most vicious characters in the country. It was said that all civilization and law stopped at the east bank of the Pecos. It took one man, a lone storekeeper who was sick of the lawlessness, to change all this. His name was Judge Roy Bean. Only half a day late. Yeah, it's moving pretty slow. Must be something wrong. Hello, Judge. How are you, Jeff? I see you a little late. Sure am. Later and faded. Left time wheel hit a rock this side of Wilson's Ford, and I limped all the way in. Any chance there's extra wheel at delivery? I don't recall one that you did. No, not with the stagecoach. Hope you're right. Then I can lay over here in Langtree for a few days. <laughs> nice looking man. Too bad he's not as nice as he looks. Do you know him? That's Duke Castle, the gambler. You know the lady? I sure do. She can cause more trouble than 50 gunfighters. Who is she, Elroy? Her name happens to be Dolly Mason. I heard her make a speech once in Denver. Yeah, I read about her. She stands up for women's rights. Yeah, she stands up and shouts for women's rights and a lot of other things. I know. She's the one that's against smoking, drinking, and gambling. And breathing, if you happen to be a man. She's what they call her a reformer. I hope Jonas finds that wheel in a hurry. You're the storekeeper? That's right. How about selling me some cigars? Cigars, indeed. I never heard of such a thing. Here we are in the West, where the air is clean and clear, and you want to pollute it with tobacco smoke. Ah, uh, why don't you mind your own business? Uh, just a minute. Yes, ma'am. Do you sell uh, liquor in this store? Oh, no, ma'am, I don't. Well, it's a good thing you don't. Excuse me. Oh, just a minute, or I'm finished with you. Just a minute. Oh, sorry, ma'am. Is there a place to stay in this town? I mean a place where a respectable lady might be comfortable. You mean you figure on staying in Langtree? I do. For quite a spell. Do you think that's any of your business? Well, no, I guess not, ma'am. The boarding house next door is good food and lodging. Good. That's all I want to know. <laughs> I guess that puts me in my place. <laughs> hey, Jeff! No extra wheel. I got to wait for the bad one to be rebuilt. for four or five days. <laughs> Tell me something, young man. Yes, ma'am? Why did you fire that gun like that? I'm just happy, that's all. And you think that's an excuse for creating bedlam? You need a good lesson, and I'm going to give it to you. You... disturbing the peace. My boy, there's times when you make arrests and there's times when you don't make arrests. This is one of those times when you don't make an arrest. If you're smart. <laughs> you all right? What 
that woman have against me? Oh, she just got it in for any man. Hey, how about my cigars? Here, we get them right. Oh, I'll get them for him, Uncle Roy. Howdy, Judge. What you doing in Lane Creek, Castle? Stage broke down. I'm stuck here. You were going through? I was, but I might change my mind and stay. I wouldn't if I was you. But you're not me, Judge. I know your record, Castle, and don't you set up any gambling operations here in Langtree. Oh, you needn't worry about that. I'm going to be thoroughly entertained watching what Miss Dolly Mason does to your town. This ought to be real interesting. you for destroying property and disturbing the peace. Maybe it'll be for your own safety. Oh, never mind about my safekeeping, young man. Do you have the authority to arrest me? Judge Bean's deputy. Very well, then. Arrest me. And we'll see what your Judge Bean does about it. Well, go on, arrest me. All right. You're under arrest. now in session. Up! 
Miss Mason, you've been charged with willfully destroying property and disturbing the peace. How do you plead? Guilty, of course. Well, now, uh, Miss Mason, you're going to have to pay for this property. I'll do nothing of the kind. Now, you, you better pay up or I'll have to put you in jail. Very well, then. Put me in jail. I refuse to pay, and that's final. I demand that you put me in jail. <laughs> Quiet. Quiet. Now, let's have it quiet in here. Well, Miss Mason, since you plead guilty, I sentence you to three days in jail. But this court considers the case unusual and suspends the sentence. Case closed. Just a minute. You see? You see what you have here? A judge who shirks his duty because he's afraid to face the issue of corruption. Corruption? What are you talking about, Miss Mason? I'm going to make a crusade of running you out of office, Judge Bean. How long is it since there's been an election for your job? Election? We've never had an election. Then by what right do you preside? How do you know these people even want you? Well, uh, well nobody's ever said anything about not wanting me. And I, uh, hey, wait a minute. How'd we get me into this? I'm not on trial. You were. Well, you're on trial now, Mr. Bean, before your own constituents. Will you hold an election, or are you afraid? Of course I'm not afraid. And I'll hold an election if you say so. When? Whatever you say. Very well, then. We'll uh, set it for next Tuesday. Now, what do you want to do a thing like that for, Uncle Roy? You can't help it. If people want an election, they got a right to have it. People didn't want it. She did. I wouldn't worry about it, Jeff. The folks around Langtree aren't going to vote Uncle Roy out of office. I wouldn't bet too much on that, Miss Bean. Funny things can happen in an election. Congratulate you, Miss Mason. I thought you were superb, simply superb. You, you, you did? This country has needed a woman like you for a long, long time, Miss Mason. Why, Mr. Castle, I have no idea you were interested in reform. Ever since I heard one of your speeches. Oh, where was that? It was, uh... uh it must have been Denver. Yes, that's where it was, Denver. <laughs> I've been a changed man ever since. I want you to know I'm behind you all the way, Miss Mason, all the way. Why, Mr. Castle, I, I, I don't know how to thank you. May I point something out to you? Well, of course, anything. You're going to need a candidate to run against the judge. A candidate? Yes. Oh, my goodness, I never thought of that. And you don't have much time to choose one. No, no, I don't, do I? Well, you see, I'm, I'm not very well acquainted here with anybody excepting yourself, and I, uh, by Mr. Castle, of course. You're my candidate. Me, Miss Mason? Of course. I was never so sure of anything in my life. You're um, fine looking. You, you have presence. You're intelligent. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Castle. You're our man. <laughs> well, it is a challenge. Mm -hmm. I accept the nomination, Miss Mason. And now I know you must be tired. I'll be going to my room. I'm just down the hall. But, but I will see you soon, won't I? We must discuss our campaign plans, you know. Tomorrow morning. Oh, that'll be fine. Goodbye, Mr. Castle. Goodbye, Miss Mason. <laughs> to Miss Dolly Mason. She just decided that I should be the new candidate for judge. You? <laughs> Naturally, I accepted. You must be loco. What do you want with a job like that? The money that's in it. You'll be my deputy. And with you making the arrests and me dishing out the fines, the tape should be fabulous. Sure. Now I get it. I thought you might. How do you know you can win? You'll have to do a lot of talking. We'll leave the talking to that silly woman. And you and I will take care of winning the election in our own way. And I want to say in conclusion that if this country is going to grow, if it's going to progress, we've got to have clean thinking devils. Morning, Miss Mason. 
You and little electioneering? I've just been telling these men how important it is to vote you out of office. Well, they might agree with you if you offer them something better. I've been promising complete reform. There'll be no more gambling or drinking of alcoholic stiffs. Well, that sounds real impressive. You hear that, Dan? This new government ought to save you a lot of money. Had to find Dan twice last month for heavy drinking. Cost him $10 both times. Pete, that ought to save you a lot of money, too. No more of this all-night gambling over China Franks. Yes, sir, you boys got a lot to look forward to. All you gotta do is vote for Miss Mason's candidate. By the way, Miss Mason, who is your candidate? You'll find out soon enough. <laughs> Take a look at that. She's running Castle for judge. I certainly am. Mr. Castle gave his consent yesterday. Miss Mason, do you, you know Duke Castle's background? I know he was once a gambler. What? But he's changed his way. He'll make a fine, upstanding judge. You mean, if he's elected? <laughs> we have every confidence of winning, Bean. But there's something we'd like to have settled now. What's that? Tomorrow, the election is to be held. But it hasn't been decided yet when the winner shall take to office. Shall we say, 6 o'clock tomorrow night? Go ahead with me. Good. Miss Mason? See what's been going on out here? I'm not. I've been working in the kitchen. Is something wrong? Here, take a look. How do you like that? Too careful for judge. Oh, no. You must have been pretty busy to let him get away with that. Let's tear it down, Uncle Roy. That's what I say. Let's tear it down right now. No, that's just what they'd like for us to do. Be a sign of weakness. Yeah, I guess you're right. They haven't got a chance of winning anyway. That's right. You know who you're voting for, don't you? Sure. Judge Bean. You were voting for him, but you just changed your mind. When you go in there, I'll be watching through the window. If you don't vote for Castle, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt real bad. Now go ahead. Vote like you should. Where's the judge? Oh, Jeff had a horse take sick, and Uncle Roy went out to his ranch to help him. Do you want to tell me what I should do? Simple, Jonas. You just pick up the chalk and make a cross under the name you want to vote for. It's impossible. I'm not even going to try. But, but you were elected to stamp it out. You have to stamp it out. I don't have to do anything, Miss Mason. I'm the one they elected, remember? And I'll run things any way I see fit. Bean, I want you to produce your records for me by 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll be here to pick them up. Remember, Bean, 9 o'clock sharp. I right. I wanted to let you know about the stage, Miss Mason. The wheel's almost fixed and we'll be pulling out in the morning. That's very interesting. 
interesting, Jonas. Personally, I'm glad you're leaving. Both of you. Now, lady, they knew you were thinking on Jonas. He didn't have anything to do with it. He's supposed to be a friend of yours, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Well, he came in here and voted for Duke Castle. What did you do that for? Well, uh, I had to vote that way. A man's got a right to vote any way he likes. That's the, that's the basis of our American... What do you mean you had to vote that way? Jonas, come back here just a minute. Who told you you had to do this? Well, you know how it is, Judge. You and I have always been good friends, but I wouldn't have voted against you unless I'd had a good reason. What was the reason, Jonas? I was told that if I didn't vote for Duke Castle, I'd get hurt. And this election's crooked. That's impossible. It's not impossible at all. Now, wait a minute, everybody. Who told you this, Jonas? Memphis. He said if I voted for you, I'd get hurt real bad. I can't believe it. A corrupt election, and I'm involved in it. You've been trying to put a lid on human nature, Miss Mason. That causes trouble every time. Being out here work hard, and they like to have a little fun. When they don't go too far, I don't bother them. I'm shocked. Deeply shocked. Jonas, have you testified all this? Why, sure, I guess I will. See who that is, deputy. You don't think you're going to get away with this, do you, Mr. Castle? We know all about your crookedness. We know you won that election by coercion. And how did you find that out? The stage driver told us. If you go out and pick up Duke Castle in Memphis, bring him in. You'll be lucky if you don't end up in jail. Oh. You've got to shut that stage driver's mouth. Yes, but there's no reason to kill him. That would be trouble we don't want. That could be more trouble. Come in. You're under arrest, Castle. What for? The judge will tell you all about it. Come on. What's the matter? Did you get hurt? Mostly my pride. I let myself get hit on the back of the head. I didn't make that arrest either. What's the matter, Jeff? I'll be all right. Did you find Jonas, Letty? No, he isn't around anywhere, Uncle Roy. That's bad. If he doesn't show up with this evening, we're late. Why? When Castle takes over his judge at 6 o'clock. He'll just dismiss that case on Memphis, and that'll be it. If they took Jonas out of town, this is going to be rough. Yeah, they probably headed for Bascom's Rock or that line shack between here and that railroad camp. Let's see if they got horses at the livery stable. Have you, uh, you heard any horses go by here in the last hour, lady? No, I, I don't recall any. Oh, I don't either. Well, they probably sneaked off toward the railroad camp. We'll head for the line shack. Well, let's go, then. You go ahead and get mounted. I want to give some instructions to Lady. Oh, quit squirming. You even look like you want to run, and I'll blast you. Well, this work out just right, Memphis. We'll be heading back to Langtree in a little while. That's all right with me. I'm tired of sitting around here like a... Hey, look! Put your gun away. We've got nothing to worry about now. Bean, you're wasting your time, and you know it. I'll be judging a half hour, then where will you be? Emma, well, I'm gonna hold court right here and try you too, Castle. I figured you might try something like that. This is a serious charge, Bean. We demand trial by jury. And I figured you might try something like that, so I'll plan for it. Jury ought to be here any minute. You're bluffing me. Look out there. <laughs> I... I don't know whether I should go or not. I keep telling myself that I should stay and help keep Langtree, the wonderful place. Oh, you wouldn't want to do that, Miss Mason. Not when there are so many other towns ahead of you. Wide open towns like Tombstone. Yeah, now, there's a town that really needs you, Miss Mason. I'm on my way. Lady, you're a 
real smart girl. <laughs>